America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot, him, uh, foot, foot excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping, traveling with him. I guess we traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. Good morning, everybody, from a very sunny and warm Athens this Saturday morning. It's around 9.30. I thought I would uh, take a walk, do a, do a video, take a walk from the Olympic Stadium. Right behind me is the first Olympic Stadium, modern Olympic Stadium. And we're going to walk to the Acropolis. We'll pass the, uh, the Temple of Zeus and we'll get to the Acropolis. It'll be about a 15 minute walk, a 20 minute walk. And uh, when we get to the Acropolis, we'll, uh, we'll stop the video. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about some news as we're walking. And we have a lot of uh, topics to get to. And let's see, what is the first story I wanna get to? I'm gonna be pulling out my phone when I need to get to some quotes. So uh, if the walk is a little, a little bumpy here and there, uh, excuse me while, while I read quotes and if I start and stop, but it'll be a nice, uh, a nice walk and a little bit of sightseeing. So the first story to get to is, okay, I wanna talk about the, uh, the trip from van der Leyen and Burrell. And they took a trip to Kiev to see Elensky. And uh, I'm going to put a link to, to a tweet down below. And this tweet has a, has a video of uh, van der Leyen going to this village outside of uh, Kiev where some, some bad things happen. I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. And uh, this video has like a reaction of van der Leyen as she's... Uh, directed to see what looked like to be to be bodies lying down in in a bag and uh, <laughs> I'm I just have to ask everyone a question according to the to the New York Times and she's with Alensky Alensky brought her there right to see the atrocities and I just have to ask according to the New York Times what happened in this village occurred on March 21st. This is according to the New York Times and their satellite imagery. According to other accounts, these atrocities occurred on like March 30th, 31st, April 1st, depending on which story you go by. And uh, the Russians did this either according to the New York Times on, uh, on March 20, 20th, 21st or the Russians did this on the 30th, 31st. Does it make any sense to have these, these bodies lying around for that long? Could, could someone explain that to me? I, I would say as from a scientific standpoint, does it make sense? And from a religious standpoint, I mean, if you're, if you're, I imagine these people are, are Orthodox or Catholic. Would it make any sense to, to have them there for th three weeks? At a minimum, eight, nine days. At a maximum, three, four weeks. Three weeks. Does it make any sense? And they're just there waiting for van der Leyen to see them? Come on, everybody. I mean, <laughs> let me know in the comments down below what you think. Check out the full tweet. Maybe I'll put a little segment of van der Leyen's reaction as she sees these what, what's, what Elensky is showing her. I'll try to find some photos as well, maybe put them up, but I have to be careful with this story. Uh, everyone knows what I mean. The, <laughs> the whole thing is, it, it, it doesn't pass the, uh, the smell test at all. As, uh, 
as our friend Gonzalo says, it doesn't pass the smell test at all. <laughs> it's, it's too much. It's too much. But let me read you some of the quotes from uh, Vanderleyen and Burrell. <laughs> it's really just, it's, it's incredible. The, the propaganda is, is out of this world. Remember also, the Alensky government, Alensky of course being an actor, but we forget that Alensky's entire team all of his advisors, they're all uh, producers and directors. I mean, they were with him on that TV show. Just keep that in mind as, as you view the video of the tweet, and I'll put that tweet in the description box, a link to that tweet so you can see the, the video and von der Leyen's reaction and, and the photos, and just get a clear picture as to what you're seeing. Remember, this is 10 days to three weeks, if you believe the Collective West's narrative after this event occurred. So, just throwing that out there. Anyway, here, here's, uh, here's some quotes from the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and the High Representative of Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Mr. Joseph Burrell. Burrell is like the, the foreign minister. He would be like a foreign minister. And they arrived by train to Kiev and uh, von der Leyen pledged support for Ukraine's EU path that's a direct quote. And uh, Borrell said that the trip is a signal that Ukraine is in control of its territory, is what Borrell told reporters. That's a quote as well. He also said, Ukraine is not a country invaded, dominated. There is still a government which receives people from outside and you can travel to Kiev. I, I don't know if he's like, advocating like tourism for Kiev. I don't know. That's such a weird statement. Hey, you know, you can still travel to Kiev, everybody. So just go to booking.com and, and make your reservations. What a weird statement. But he also says Ukraine is not a country invaded, dominated. That's his quote. Invaded and dominated. So we're going through all of these, according to Burrell, if you take his quote at face value, we're destroying the economies of Europe. We're destroying the USD. We're about to go to World War III. We've placed all of these sanctions on Russia, unprecedented sanctions for a country, according to Burrell, which is not invaded and not dominated. Those are Burrell's exact words. The foreign minister, the foreign policy chief of the EU, a country not invaded and not dominated. Anyway, very, very interesting. I've got a good clown world, by the way. I've got a really go good clown world. The clown world should be Joe Biden and his speech yesterday with uh, the Supreme Court. Um, Jackson, who's, who's now, uh, Jackson is her name, right? She's now uh, been approved to be in the Supreme Court and Biden talked about how he and Xi Jinping were hiking in the Himalayas. <laughs> God, this guy hiking in the Himalayas with Xi Jinping. Um, and Jackson was like laughing. But that's not the clown world story. I'll get to the clown world story, which is more like a fake news story at the end of the video. Um, Russia has kicked out all of uh, all kinds of NGOs. They announced that yesterday. Let me give you a list. They have kicked out from Russia, let's see, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the Carnegie Foundation for International Peace, and several German and Polish NGOs. This is a good move, actually. Every country should kick out all these NGOs because they don't really do the work that they were supposed to do, that they were meant to do. They've also become just extensions of... Uh, of a globalist Soros policy, world order, a Klaus Schwab, WEF Soros world order. So Amnesty International and Human Rights, Rights Watch, they're not what they were supposed to be. They've turned it to something completely different. So yeah, uh, <laughs> with each passing day, Russia becomes a, a more sane country, definitely kicking out these NGOs will uh, make Russian society a lot better. Now, we have some, some interesting news, some very interesting news. 
and that has to do with the mercenaries, well, what I think are mercenaries, or NATO soldiers, who are stuck in Mariupol. And we have a statement from the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense. Now, I've said in many videos, when the Russian Ministry of Defense makes statements, it's, they, they should be believed, I think. It's just my opinion. I think they're very, very careful. From day one, the Ministry of Defense was, uh, was instructed to be very careful with the statements that they make because you know everything that they say is going to be scrutinized. I mean, it's gonna be under the microscope and, uh, and they've been directed to, to only make statements after they've been double, triple, quadruple checked. So this coming from the Russian Ministry of Defense and it has to do with the Avostal uh, factory in Mariupol which still has, from what I understand, around two, 3,000 Azov guys and others. I'll say Azov guys and others, maybe other people, maybe other things. But uh, the Russians are, are, are now, they have it totally encircled and they have like 98, 99% of Mariupol. Pretty much the only part of Mariupol that they don't have is this big, massive steel factory. And the Russians are sitting there saying, well, what do we do now? Do we, how do we smoke these guys out? Do we just bomb this factory we don't want to destroy the factory though do we flood it they've been talking about flooding it they've been talking about storming it and just going in slowly slowly so they're, they're kind of contemplating what to do to get these guys out and i think they want some of these people who are stuck in this factory alive that's the impression that i'm getting so this is what the russian ministry of defense said and i quote the results of radio intercepts. Let me get into the shade here because the sun is making it hard to read. All right. The results of radio intercepts show that in addition, that in addition to NAZIs from the Azov Battalion and remnants of the Ukraine Armed Forces, there is a significant number of foreign mercenaries in the occupied areas of the city. In addition to Ukrainian and Russian radio communications are conducted in six other mostly European foreign languages. Radio communications, mostly foreign European languages. Six other mostly foreign European languages let me know in the comments down below, what are the languages that these people in stuck in the Azov, Azov style factory are speaking? In what languages are they communicating? I will put a whole ton of money on French. I'd say English, Swedish, maybe Swedish, German, that's four. Dutch? How about Dutch? Do I hear anybody saying Dutch? Going once, going twice. What languages do you think are being spoken in that factory? Boy, oh boy. I, I really hope we, uh, we unravel this mystery because I'm, I'm also very curious as to what's in that uh in that factory but there's no doubt that and i'm here at the uh one sec this is the uh the temple zeus and this is the gate this used to be the gate to uh to athens right here And up in the distance, you can see the, the Acropolis up there. So, yeah. So, uh, let's walk over across the street and go to the Acropolis area. So, yeah, we've, we've got uh, a real mystery that I think the Russian military also wants to unravel. They want to take whatever's in there, they want to take it alive. That's my belief. That's why the flooding is, that, that was an interesting idea. And I wonder if the flooding is meant to just just smoke them out, just get them to come out. I don't know, but um, let's see. What other stories do I have here? Uh, we got to talk about the uh, Kramatorsk. 
and this missile that hit the railway station. Terrible tragedy. Last, the last I read was 30 to 50 dead, 100 injured. Um, this is in the Donbass. And the, uh, the fighting in the Donbass has already started, by the way. The Russians are, are just pounding that area with airstrikes and missiles. They're softening up the area. The, uh, the Ukraine military and the Azov guys, around 60,000 of them, 70,000. They're well dug in. I mean, they've been there for a long, long time. So they're very well dug in. But they have no fuel, no gas. They can't move. No supplies. No food. They're just sitting ducks. And the Russians have already started uh, hitting those areas. But we have to talk about Kramatorsk, which is one of the cities where a lot of the fighting is going to take place. So we had the other day this missile strike. And uh, I said in the video that I did yesterday, one second, I'm going to show you something right here. That is a statue of uh, Melina Mercuri. That is Alexandra Mercuri's aunt. She is, uh, she was our most famous actress, a politician, an activist for human rights. Uh, she's very much a, a Greek hero. She is a hero to, to Greece. And that's her, her statue right there. Uh, as we enter the Acropolis, her statue is there as we enter the Acropolis. And so I said in the video yesterday, I said, if it's a Toychka U missile, then it's the Ukrainians, because the Russians don't have Toychka use. They don't use them. If it's an Iskander, like some Ukrainian uh, officials were saying, then it's Russia that did this, because Russia's using the Iskander. Well, now we know it's a Toychka, a Toychka U. And we know that, of course, because there's been a lot of photographic evidence, and people actually are, are like showing parts of the, of the missile, and there's no doubt about it. 100% it's a Toychka. The mainstream media is saying it's Russia. Doesn't matter. They're still saying Russia did it, of course. And there's not going to be any investigation or anything. Just like this town in uh, this village in Kiev, instead of sending investigators to see what's happening in this village in Kiev, Ursula van der Leyen and Borrell go there. So instead of sending an investigative forensic team to see what's going on, you have the uh, you have Laurel and Hardy, <laughs> you have Dumb and Dumber, van der Leyen and Borrell going there, so they can get the the PR pictures and video, all optics, all PR optics. They don't want the truth. They just want the spin. The same thing with this Toychka uh, Kramatorsk incident. All the media, all of the, the collective West is saying Russia did it, but everyone knows that Russia is not using the Toychka use. Everyone knows that it's Ukraine that is using the Toychka use. Now, does it mean if you wanted to really stretch it that the Russian military decided to, to pull out some Toychka use from their old Soviet days and bring them to the front lines in order to create this false flag. I, ca I guess you could make that that stretch, but I mean, it's, it's, it's such a ridiculous stretch. More, more, than, more likely than not, this was, I think we know who did this. Even Zelensky, according to the Telegraph, and this is from the Telegraph, and I quote, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Zelensky, I say Zelensky, Zelensky, says he expects a tough global response after a Toychka U ballistic missile struck a railway station in eastern Ukraine, killing at least 50 people. That's from the Telegraph. This is the Acropolis area. No, you can see the Acropolis in the distance. So yeah, and we'll walk to the museum and we'll wrap up the video. So I think there's no doubt about it that, uh, in my mind, in my mind, in my opinion, if it's a Toychka U, we know who did it. If it was an Iskander, it would mean Russia did it, absolutely. No doubt about that. Iskander, Russia, Toychka, Ukraine. And we all know it's a Toychka now. So the final story before we get to clown world is uh, one of uh, Zelensky's top advisors, Podoliak, Mikhail Podoliak, came out with statements saying that a ceasefire and a truce with Russia, and I quote, is meaningless. That was his quote, his meaningless. He said, we won't agree to a Minsk III or a Budapest II. It's all pointless. He also said, in a historical perspective, even a short one, all these Minsks lead to great tragedies. 
None of these agreements will work without real mechanisms of preventing war. Podoliak also said Ukraine is not interested in a temporary truce with Russia, and it's important to push through such conditions that would not allow Russia to even think of attacking Ukraine or crossing its borders. So I read his statement and it's clear as day to me that uh, we're not going to get a, a ceasefire, at least if you read his statement. And he's a, he's a top advisor of Zelensky. So. All right, let's go to the museum and wrap this up with the clown world. And we'll wrap it up with a clown world story at the Acropolis Museum. So, yeah, Ukraine doesn't. They're, they're not interested in any type of peace. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. And even Lavrov said the other day, Lavrov came out with a statement the other day, and he said that uh, Ukraine officials, they gave a proposal which was inching towards what the Russians were looking for. And Lavrov said they've completely walked back those proposals because the EU and uh, the Biden White House told them to, to walk it back. So I don't know if you guys can see here. Let me show it to you. I hope you can see. So like underneath there's, there's a glass floor and it's kind of the, the ruins of the area of the Acropolis. One sec. So uh, the final story is going to be a clown world story, a clown world story at the Acropolis Museum. <laughs> so we have for the second time, for the second time we have um, from Nexta. I don't know if you guys remember Nexta News. I think Nexta News were, they were the guys that were pushing for regime change in Belarus. So I don't know if everyone remembers that. I, th I think that's correct. Let me know in the comments down below if that's not correct. But I believe it was Nexta, and I think they're based out of Poland. I, I believe they're Polish. They're a Polish news agency. But anyway, Nexta News, way back when the conflict started, they put out a tweet, and they were saying that the Russians in Mariupol are using uh, crematoriums. Is that the right word? Crematoriums, like to, to cremate bodies. And they were wheeling them in to the area in order to dispose of uh, all their massive military losses. And uh, they put out this tweet, and it was quickly debunked because the photo that they were using was a photo from a YouTube video somewhere in, like, the United States taken eight years ago. So they took, a, they took a snapshot, they took a screenshot from a YouTube video that was posted eight years ago, and they uh, said, this is, a, this is a crematorium, and this is used to, to cremate bodies, and the Russians are bringing it into Mariupol in order to hide their... Uh, their military losses, you know, the 15, 30,000 Russian uh, soldiers that have died according to the Pentagon. And that's how the Russians are disposing of, of these bodies. They're cremating them. And this was like way, way when the, uh, when the conflict first started. Well, yesterday, <laughs> Next to News <laughs> took the same photo that they used that was debunked like three, four weeks ago. They took the same photo and they ran the same story saying that Russians are wheeling out uh, crematoriums. And I hope that's the right word, crematoriums. <laughs> anyway, they, they, they're wheeling out these uh, portable, uh, portable things to, delete, to, uh, to cremate bodies. <laughs> I'm jumbling my words because it, it's, they've run out. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at this. They've run out of propaganda. Ghost of Kiev, Snake Island, the hospital, the, uh, the school, um, all the stuff we've seen in the last week or two, the village in Kiev, all of these things. They've run out of, out of uh, propaganda, and now they're just recycling. And so they brought up the story that they had a month ago, and they reused it with the same photo, the photo that's already been debunked. The photo's already been debunked. It's in a YouTube video. It's an eight-year-old video, 
and this complete nonsense. It's fake. But they're, they're wheeling it out. And that is the clown world, everyone. It's gotten so, so clownish that these propaganda agents, these fake news publications like Nexta, have to actually recycle their clown world fake news. So I, I guess in about a week, we're going to hear about the ghost of Kiev. Maybe they'll rename it. They'll call him the ghost of Odessa or something. And then we're going to hear about Snake Island. Maybe they will rename that as well. Maybe they'll call it like Scorpion Island or something like that. Frog Island. Who knows? But uh, they're recycling through, through the propaganda. That is the, uh, that's the clown world segment. And uh, I think I will end the video there. I hope uh, everyone had a nice walk and they enjoyed this beautiful day in the Acropolis and uh, the Duran.locals.com, Alexander's channel as well. Check that out. He's doing a lot of good, the best analysis, I think, with regards to what's going on in, uh, in Ukraine and Russia and also the economic side of things. And uh, I'll leave it there. I'm going to get a coffee and I'm going to get this video up. And uh, that, was, that was an interesting laugh. <laughs> Very interesting laugh. Kind of like my laugh. Very, very, very strange laugh. Anyway, everybody, uh, take care. Bye-bye.